Hello, my dear students. How's everything with you guys? Finally, this is the last module of the course subject, Professional Development and Applied Ethics. And we shall proceed with the mock interview very soon. The title of this module is One Step Closer to My Profession. So the title of the module is inspired by the topics we shall be discussing today. First, the step-by-step -step guide on how to write a winning resume and effective cover letter. Now, we all know that competition is tight nowadays in looking for a job or for a good job. And it's really challenging to find the job that you really want nowadays. Or sometimes we don't even know what we want. And I think that that's fine as long as we equip ourselves with the necessary skills, uh, like writing a good resume and competent resume, at least. So I have here 10 comprehensive steps in writing a winning resume. So I'm going to read them all to you. First, choose the best resume format. Secondly, list your contact information. Third, write a winning resume introduction. Next, highlight your relevant work experience or experiences. Then create a clear educational section. Then next to that is add relevant skills for the job. And then you have to tie in with key certifications, awards, and honors. Then pick the ideal resume layout. Then you have to make a matching cover letter. And last but not the least, and one of the most important things is proofread your resume before submitting it to the employers. Now, um, with this era, and with this type of audience, I think that, I mean, I don't think that you're going to have a hard time in designing or creating your own layout because um, you're all adept with technology and you like making your lives uh, easier, right? So with resume formatting, we can clearly um, already use resume builder. We're in we just have to supply our own information and then the resume will, builder will generate and organize this set of information into a good looking resume. Well, um, of course, if you enjoy formatting it yourself, then, or I mean, designing your own layout, then you could do that. But this technique saves time. And if you don't have enough talent like me and or skills in designing a layout, then Resume Builder is your friend. Now, but before using Resume Builder, how do you pick the right resume format for you, right? So is it reverse chronological resume? Do you think it's functional or skills-based resume format? Or do you think that you should use combination resume format? So before jumping into conclusion, let us find out first which is the most appropriate format you should use. So with reverse chronological resume format, this is used if you have already enough experience that is relevant to the position that you're applying for. This also is the most popular resume format nowadays. Or you could pick a functional skills-based resume format if you still lack work experience because you're, you're still a student or you're a student who wants to find a job or you just recently graduated, or you're changing career, right? And last but not the least is the combination resume format. This one is usually used when you're looking for a job that requires many specializations, like three to four different disciplines, maybe, or fields. Um, many use this if they want to showcase uh, their many and various credentials in, in their record. Now, you're thinking since you're still studying, right, you would be selecting uh, the second one, which is the skills-based resume format. However, I will be showing an example of a reverse chronological format because it's more practical when you apply for a job. And the reason is, it is the most common format registered in HR systems. 
So when you submit your resume, you'll get in for consideration. And that's the first step that we want, right? So the first is one page in length. It will be um, better if your resume is a single page one. But in case you have lots of things that you should or you could put into, um, two pages is the max for usual HR evaluators. Second one is have clear section headings. And this is very important in formatting. And third is have ample white spaces around the margins to make it look neat. Next is selecting a readable and formal font style. Usual styles appropriate are Ubuntu, Roboto, Overpass, etc. Then alongside, of course, with font style is font size. So usually, as a rule of thumb, we use 12, 11 to 12 for normal text and then 14 to 16 for emphasis and section titles. Last is, of course, you should be able to save your file as PDF format. Why? To avoid messing up your formatting and let the HR manager see what it's supposed to be. Unlike in Word, where it could mess up your formatting. Now, please look at the design and format of the two resume samples presented in this slide. On the left side, which is the simpler and the traditional one, applicants use this is if they are applying for a more formal workplace, such as banking, finance, education, maybe, and legal positions. While on the right side, the resume format and design involves creativity. As you could see, there are colors, there are more formattings. Um, so applicants use this for tech companies or marketing or advertising organizations or any industry that requires you to inculcate your sense of um, innovation or imagination. Now for this one, the contents included in the reverse chronological format resume would be contact information professional resume summary or resume objective. Next is work experience and achievements, then education, skills, and other optional sections. You could include uh, languages, publications, hobbies, achievements, uh, whatever. Now, um, first up is contact information. In this section, we have three important components to remember that uh, must have information, optional information, and what not to include, or the things that you should not be including in the contact information section. So I'll be discussing one by one. Must have information should include your first name, followed by your last name, phone number, email address, and location. And for optional information, you can include your professional title. You could see it, it's reflected in the sample, so above, um, Robert Johnson, Digital Marketing Specialist, and your LinkedIn URL or, you know, other social media that you use or website or blog, but I advise a more professional approach. So use LinkedIn instead, unless your social media and your website or blog reflects your professional work, then you could include this information, this set of information, of course. So what's not to include in the contact information section is your date of birth. We all know that that's not part of contact information. That's so obsolete, okay? So please do not include date of birth. And if you're going to include your email address, please avoid unprofessional email addresses such as heartpink444 at yahoo.com or pia, I'm Denzel in distress um, at gmail.com, you know? So um, that's so obsolete as well. So if you have those kinds of email addresses, then I suggest that you make a new one. And um, for headshots, um, do not include headshots if you're using a traditional format. But if you're on the more creative part of the industry that you're applying for, I think that that's good. Now, when we talk about res uh, resume summary or objective, um, so we think, what are we gonna make? 
in terms of our own situation? Is it resume uh, summary or resume objective, right? So if you have working experiences, then go for resume summary. But if you're just a student or a newly graduate or you're wanting to change career, then resume objective is for you. But um, how to write these things? Both of the summary and objective technically must have two to three sentences, but they differ in the content itself. Now for the first one, the resume summary, you have to mention the following, your job, years of experience, job achievements, and your desired goal for working in the specific company. Example, um, customer support representative with five years experience of um, five years of experience in the IT industry, or um, things like that. But with with the with the sample that I'm giving to you, it's um, you can see it on the top, Baron Jost, data entry specialist. So this the resume summary says, quote unquote a rigorous task-driven professional with substantial experience in data entry, customer service, office management, and reception duties. Adept at leveraging superior communicative and interpersonal skills to interact with diverse individuals and groups at all organizational levels. Possess incomparable ability to perform accurate and efficient entry of data into administrative software. So, those are, I mean, that's an example of resume summary. On the other hand, creating or crafting a resume objective, uh, you could use this format. So um, at the bottom part, you could see the format. So I'll try to give an example for you guys. Let's say um, a BS tourism or hospitality management graduate looking to apply my three-year customer service skills as a hotel front desk staff at Sheraton Hotel, Macden to help in delivering excellent customer relations, troubleshootings, and service recovery. So, you know, that's just an example. But there are more examples that I could give you of resume objectives. So if you're still a student, you could format it this way. Hardworking recent graduate with BA in graphic design from New York State University, seeking new ex um, opportunities. Three plus years of practical experience working with Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop, creating illustrations and designing UX or UI, looking to grow as a designer as well as perfect my art at the XYZ Design Studio. Or if you want to change career, you can format it this way. IT project manager with five plus years, five plus years of experience in software development. Manage a team of developers to create products for several industries, such as fintech and HR tech. Looking to leverage my experience in managing outsourced projects as a product owner at XYZ. Now, third component is work experiences. Uh, in here, you should be able to include job title or position, company, name, location, and its description, achievements and responsibilities, and date and duration of employment. So if you'll inspect, inspect better, um, the work experiences are arranged in reverse chronological order, starting from the most recent job that you've had, all the way down listing into the past. So this is a sample of the format of work experience. So the latest. We uh, start with the job title position, which is the digital marketing manager, company name and its location and description is Airfield Bomax, London, United Kingdom. Then achievements and responsibilities should be written something like this. Created a new format for reporting and presenting the sales, customer engagement, and Google AdWords reports that shortened the meetings by 30%. So it's included not only the tasks or responsibilities, but also the achievement incorporating numerical um, figures to show the actual accomplishments. And there you have the date and duration of employment at the left top part saying that work started June 2015 till the present. So that's just an example. 
Now proceeding, this slide is to discuss the importance of mentioning your achievements and how to correctly write one. Correct examples have numerical and measurable information while the incorrect examples doesn't have. Example, exceeded sales team KPIs by 30% plus for three months straight. The incorrect example for that one is generated leads through cold calling. Another correct example of um, an achievement is generated over $24,000 in sales in one month. And the incorrect example for that one is managed existing company clients. So format it this way to be more uh, specific. Now in this slide, it shows the most, that most companies, I mean, um, they use already applicant tracking system, ATS, or that's like an HR system to filter resume submissions that are qualified. So to do this, you have to mention some keywords that fit to the position that you're applying for. Example, if you're applying for a digital marketing um, manager, then of course you should use the keywords that's significant to that position. Let's say um, five years of experience in online marketing, social media marketing experience with good knowledge of Facebook I mean advertising, and then BA in marketing or business administration, and then experience managing 20,000 USD monthly advertising budget on Facebook. So it's better to um, specifically tailor your resume so that your resume should, would be filtered and be considered in the HR systems that's usually being used nowadays. So one of the frequently asked questions is how much work experience do you need to include in your resume? For those with no work experience yet, um, nothing or so you should, so folk, so nothing yet. So you could not include anything on that portion. So um, focus on other components on your resume and strengthen its content. Additionally, mention your education first, if this is the case. But for entry-level candidates, you could list everything. However, for mid-level professionals, you should only mention uh, work experiences that are related to the position that you're applying for. However, for senior professionals, you can list up to 15 years of relevant work experiences. So you could showcase your um, period of time that you've been working. Now, um, the next component here is education. Contents should include your program name, the degree which you've completed, let's say BS in tourism or BS in um, hospitality management, for example. Next is university name. So if you have a new university degree, you don't need to mention your high school and basic education. So let's say just Sorsogon State University. Then of course, year or years attended, you could put in August 2021 to May 2005 if you're already anticipating that you will be graduating on time. Or if you want to have an actual example, then you, put, you could put August 2021 to present, right? Um, and then there are other optional educational information you could include, such as your GPA. So you could include this if you have an impressive academic career. Let's say you've graduated with flying colors or you've graduated um, magna cum laude or summa cum laude or cum laude, right? So um, let's say... I mean, another optional information you could put is academic achievements. Um, let's say you've won an award or received a distinctive academic award, you know, and then you're minoring in, let's say you're taking a bachelor of law minor in economics. So you could also put that because that is relevant in your um, education. Now let's proceed to the content, to the next con component I mean, which is skills. Let's mention first that there are two types of skills in employability, the hard skills and then the soft skills. Hard skills are those um, skills that are 
you know, there are measurable abilities, um, you know, such as, um, for example, technical writing or using Microsoft applications or bartending skills. Those are examples of hard skills. While for soft skills, um, those are the more personal, and this could revolve around social skills, communication skills, personal skills, leadership skills, critical thinking skills, even collaborative skills, and many others, right? So in, in a good winning resume, you, you should be able to cover both of the skills, the hard and soft skills, to show that you're a well-rounded person. So uh, in doing so, you can mention that your level of proficiency in as you, it is reflected above, in the sample above, I mean. So it's either you're a beginner, advanced, or expert. Let's say Python, that's like, you know, near to expert. Ruby, that's also near to expert. JavaScript, you're already an expert. So you could see the level of proficiency in there. In soft skills, you can enumerate them, such as teamwork, leadership, time management, flexibility, patience, and many others. Now, if you have unique skills which are not directly related to the position that you're applying for, it's better not to mention this. Let's say you're applying for a digital marketing manager or specialist position and you have this welding and fabri fabrication skill. So it's obviously an, a hard skill. So, but you know that it's not related to the position that you're applying for. So better if you don't mention this because they're not going to be useful in the long run anyway in the job that you're applying for, right? So mention only those that are related and relevant. And most importantly, mention the universal skills, meaning all jobs need this type of skills and are basic necessary skills, like for example, soft skills, um, leadership, teamwork, critical thinking, and for hard skills, let's say Excel, MS Word, PowerPoint, Photoshop, et cetera, right? Now, the last component is other important sections. So this includes um, languages, uh, hobbies and interests, projects, volunteer works, certifications, publications, awards, you know. First up that we will be discussing in the last component, which is the other important sections is um, languages say you have or you know other languages so it's always better to mention this in your resume because you never know when it's going to be handy especially if you work in a more globalized workforce right opportunities are endless so by doing this mention the specific languages that you know and assign them with the level of proficiency let's say you're a native american speaker and then you have you're fluent in speaking tagalog and you're intermediate speaker in French language and you're only a beginner in speaking Russian language. So please put in there if you have learned languages. Next um, is hobbies and interests. This part shows your individualism and your personality. Uh, this is important because in case you'll be working in the company that you're applying for, your employer already knows something about you in your personal life so you may kick off with a good relationship just because you both like doing yoga or you both like doing boxing right and projects right this is also could be included like this one is a showcase of your passion outside or even maybe related to your field this is good to include because it shows your passion in working towards non-work related projects and then um, including your volunteering works always adds a positive remark on your resume. So if you're doing some volunteer works, include this. Also relevant certifications and awards for the position you're applying for could be here in the section as well. And if you're pursuing an educational or creative career, your publications could be mentioned and you have to make sure that you put the URL link of your literary work in your resume so that when the employer wants to check it out, then they could do so. So, um, so that's it for the contents 
for the reverse chronological resume format. So after putting all the necessary information in your resume, it's always good to proofread them by using this checklist as, a, as an example to review your work. By doing this, you may fill in some missing information in other sections and improve your resume, unless you're using a resume software builder wherein there is a feature where it, where it assess and evaluates your um, resume. So you, you could know what are the things that you can modify, you can edit, and you could improve in your resume. Now, um, finally, after finishing working on your resume, it's time to work on your cover letter. This is a simple format used to concisely relay your intention. First is self-introduction, where you should be able to include your work experience and mention why you're interested in the position that you're applying for. Note that it is also in this section of the cover letter um, where your aim is to make an impression. So you could include one to two um, top achievements that you have in your career if you have already work experience. However, if you're new in the workforce, then you should instead emphasize your education and educational achievements instead. Secondly is stating how you will do the job will be a key to a good cover letter. So in this section, the second part, you should mention top three requirements that you've um, seen in the job posting or in the job advertisement and explain how you will be able to add value to the company for each of those requirements. And lastly, be professional enough to include by saying thanks and directing them in the letter into contacting you. So here you see on the left side, a complete winning resume. And on the right side is a complimentary or matching cover letter anchored on your resume. So if you do this, your employer would think that, you're, that you've personalized applying for their company. Not only it looks aesthetic and formal, but it also shows the effort that you have put in with your application. So your final project is your resume and cover letter. And then your final examination is, of course, mock interview. And this, both of it um, are due on May 3 to 5 during your mock interview schedule. Instructions for mock interview would be given by class in our group chats. So that's it for professional development and applied ethics. I hope that you've learned a lot in this core subject, knowledge-wise and skills-wise. See you all on the day of the mock interview. Break a leg.